Hello, my name is John Ryuta, and I'm the product manager for binoculars, spotting scopes, microscopes, and elements outdoor electronics at Celestron. Many people have written in to Dear Celestron to ask, how does one become an astronomer? In my own case, it was when I joined Celestron. I'd actually been interested in space since I was a boy. I grew up on the mouth of the Columbia River uh, to a family that was involved in commercial fishing. And I would be out on the boat with my father uh, making night drifts. And between when we set the net out and between when we hauled the net back in, there was a great deal of time. And when the nights were clear and the moon was not out or not visible, I should say, there were an amazing number of stars, and I could sit on the bow of the boat, and I could look up at the heavens and just be absolutely entranced by what was there. Problem is, I didn't really know what it was. I later took up natural history, bird watching, geology, botany, and that became the focus of my activities for some decades. When I joined Celestron, in order to develop binoculars and spotting scopes, small optics, as it were, I felt it was my responsibility to also develop an understanding of astronomy. After all, I was now employed by the world's top astronomical instrument maker. That opened a remarkable door to me to explore interests that had lain dormant for decades. I first took up astronomy through the study of it by binoculars. Using binoculars are an excellent technique for exploring the night sky to begin to learn uh, one's way around. Binoculars are superb for viewing the moon, and also because of their wide field of view, they allow a much larger perspective to be taken on the skies at night. One of the challenges, of course, in going from terrestrial natural history to astronomy is in astronomy, you have a completely different set of reference points. And so there was a bit of learning that had to be done, but nothing that was unachievable, of course. As a scholar of the history of natural history, I tend to look at things from how they became what they were. And so whereas some people would take to it extremely from the experiential point, I actually had to look into how did astronomy become what astronomy was and is today. And so that led me down the history of astronomy, which is a fascinating subject to me, as well as the history of the instruments that are now used in astronomy. How did they come to be? Who invented them? Why were they invented? Who was the first person to observe what? These are all subjects of great interest to me and, and ones that I am extraordinarily grateful that I have now added to my list of many curiosities. Um, but as far as the astronomy practice, I am still very involved in binocular astronomy, although I very much enjoy telescopic astronomy as well. Uh, the development of Celestron's StarSense Explorer line has added uh, to the speed with which I've been able to explore the heavens. Uh, before that, uh, using star charts and such, uh, it's, it's a bit time consuming, but with the StarSense Explorer, I simply download the app and pop it into the phone mount on the telescope, and it leads me to whatever it is that I'm curious about seeing that evening. It's an excellent tool, and one that all beginning astronomers should look at uh, immediately. As far as the rest of it, it's simply a matter of finding the door into the subject itself and then pursuing whichever corridor uh, leads you to your own interests. So for some, such as myself, it might end up being the history of the practice itself. Uh, for others, it might be astrophotography. Um, for others, it might be, for instance, meteor watching is a popular uh, subject. Uh, the observation and monitoring of uh, man-made satellites is another aspect of astronomy that some find interesting. I've actually been looking into that myself recently. Uh, I would also encourage people uh, who are interested in taking up the, the hobby 
to look at the resources that are available through the various organizations. Uh, for instance, uh, the Astronomical League has a number of observing programs that I've found very helpful. Uh, those in Canada should look to the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. They also have an excellent observing program with graded levels of observation programs. Um, you get a nice pin badge for both of those. It's rather fun. You can show off your, your craft to your friends. But that's really about where I am right now. I, I always wait for the skies to clear, living in northwest Oregon as I do. That's uh, somewhat limited. Uh, but when they do, I, I like to, to go outside and, and just simply gaze back up at the heavens again and try and recapture that wonder that I had when I was 11 years old sitting on the bow of my father's boat. I hope you find your way to astronomy if you haven't already, or bird watching, or whatever it is that you're interested in exploring. There's a grand world out there to see, and there's something to be fascinated by in all aspects of it. For Dear Celestron, this has been John Ryuta. I wish you good observing. Thank you.